it's a little chilly out there, but it's time to start our trip for the weekend. We are heading up to far north Georgia in search of a salamander that has only officially been documented in the state once. The eastern mud puppy is arguably the rarest salamander in Georgia, despite suitable habitat existing across a lot of the furthest northern reaches of the state. This is arguably the most famous species of water dog, and it's much bigger than the ones that we have seen in central Georgia. For years, there was only ever one known record from the northwestern corner of the state, but to my knowledge, there has been one more, more recent observation, bringing the total number of mud puppy records that I know about in Georgia up to two. First stop, the grocery store. We gotta get bait. All right, where are these sardines at? Vienna sausages, those would work. Ah, oh, yeah, there this we go. The good stuff. Chicken of the sea. All right, guys, this is probably where we're gonna put our first traps in the water. This is the drainage where the first mud puppy ever was recorded in the state of Georgia. So we know at least historically they were here. So we're gonna bait our traps, throw them in the water, and we'll check them tomorrow morning and see what's in them. Also, Gabe is here. What's up? All right, we've got this trap all deemed up and we're gonna throw it in. We've got a total of four traps because we're allowed to set two per person from what I understand. So we're only gonna do four today just to make sure we comply with the Georgia fishing laws. Alrighty, that's two traps down, two to go. Oh, we're in the right area. They got wildlife and reptiles out here. Is there really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, spot number two. I'm gonna put two traps here as well. And uh, we're packing the Deans as usual. Really, really repulsive, but that's the, uh, that's the whole point. The water dogs have to be able to smell these things and find our trap. All right, let's try to find some salamanders. All right, I just flipped our first salamanders of the day. There's actually a couple of them. If I can get them to show themselves. There we go, there's our seal salamander. There was another guy in here. There's at least three salamanders under here. Seal, another seal, and a little Blue Ridge two line. Nice triple flip. So this is Euresia wilderae, the Blue Ridge 2 line. It's basically just a montane equivalent to Cerigera. And then these are true seal salamanders, I believe, which are what the uh, Desmognathus chiaha was formerly known as, which is the seal salamander, but these are real seals. And we now know Desmognathus chiaha to be its own species. All right, here's a look at these two seals together before I let them go. Overall, pretty similar looking to Desmognathus chiaha, but this guy we have here in the front you don't really see that super light variation of a seal salamander with the uh, Talladega seals, at least from my experience so far. But yeah, nice looking salamanders and a new addition for the year. True seal salamanders, which are Desmognathus monticola or monticola. So Gabe just flipped a kind of ridiculous looking two line. Look at that orange. That is insane. Look at that orange. And here's another new species for the year. This is a southern zigzag salamander. Very similar looking to Webster's and Redbacks, but a different species nonetheless. All right, you can kind of see his zigzag a little bit better. You can see when we have Webster eye or Redbacks, it's more of a smooth line. And Webster eye are actually, I think, more closely related to zigzags than they are Redbacks. So they're definitely a little bit more zigzaggy, but you can see just how jagged that line is down his back. But very cool. Very common species up here, and I'm sure we'll see more between today and tomorrow. But nice to check another species off the list for 2023. Here's another seal. These are definitely the most common salamander in this creek so far, but very cool. Just let him go back under his rock. There's a really neat looking little zigzag. You can see just how different that pattern is from really anything we see on Webster Eye. There's that guy, and then the next rock over, here's another one. Look at that beautiful blue specking. They have a little bit of an arrow on their nose. You can kind of see here what I mean. You got the two kind of orange stripes coming from the eye to the nose there on the tip. Gave his crayfishing. <laughs> there he is. 
There's a huge red salamander back in there. Let's see if I can flip this rock and get to him. Look at that. <laughs> He's missing an eyeball. He's got a gigantic head. Look at that. Holy cow. It's Ruberzilla. That thing is awesome. This thing is actually hard to believe. Gabe actually pointed this out. I didn't notice it at first, but look at the little tiny red tip on his tail where it's starting to regrow. You can see battle scars all the way up the body and then just that gnarly big head with only one eyeball. Look at that. So gnarly. You can see the battle scars down the side. Really big bite mark there on his tail. And then, of course, the neon tip. Oh, man. That is so gnarly. Look at that. What happened to your eyeball, brother? If you look at the right side, it looks like it's dead, like a dried-up yeah. salamander. All right, big dude. Back into your tunnel. That bright little tail tip is so weird. I know. a really vibrant red salamander back in a crack. Back. It's a little red salamander larvae that Gabe just found. It's kind of cool. You can see he's been torn up probably by an adult red salamander or a spring salamander trying to eat him one. But you can tell this is a red, not a spring, because he has pretty well-defined spots down the body. Here's another really nice-looking Blue Ridge 2 line. Whoop, there he goes. This guy's entirely orange, though. All right, everybody. Well, we're going to drive back through the North Georgia countryside to where we're going to be crashing tonight. Uh, get some dinner, get some sleep, and then we're going to get up first thing in the morning and check traps, and hopefully we'll have a mud puppy. It's not terribly cold outside, but that water sure is going to be cold. Hopefully we won't be spending too much time in it unless there's a mud puppy involved. I can see it. It's floating. Is it? It, wasn't, it was more submerged. I thought so. Right? Here's our first trap. I thought it was more submerged. Nothing. Nobody. All right, Gabe. Trap number two. <laughs> Nothing. All right, who's pulling this one? You gonna do the honors, Gabe? Trap number three, three of four. Is that the Dean can? That's the Dean can. Nothing? Is there a fish? We caught oh, a we fish. A fish. <laughs> well, our trap wasn't a complete failure, I guess. We'll throw that guy back. All right, trap finale. Damn, no mud puppies. Well, I gotta say I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't get anything in our traps this morning, but I mean, that's kind of what we were expecting. It was either gonna be a mud puppy or it was gonna be nothing. And unfortunately we rolled nothing. So I think we're gonna go try to turn up a couple more new salamander species for the year since we're already up here today and then call it a trip. All right, well, since we failed on our mud puppy quest, we're gonna spend the rest of the day just trying to find as many salamanders as we can. I'd love to see a Northern spring but other than that, there's a couple of species that we can only find in this corner of Northwest Georgia, and hopefully we'll be able to see a couple of those today, so.
our morning has been pretty uneventful so far, but we're kind of going through this leaf litter in the splash zone where all this water is dripping down. And I uncovered a nice little pickerel frog. Really nice looking dude. Always love seeing these guys. And uh, it's even better to find a nice full grown adult like this because a lot of the ones I feel like we see are either hard to catch because they're back in caves or they're juveniles. All right, bud, here's your little cave. Go on. <laughs> I'm surprised we haven't seen more of these yet. Gabe actually just had to leave, but I ended up in a new area. And right there are some spotted eggs. This water is so ridiculously dark, you can barely see them in there, but hopefully we'll be able to turn up some salamanders around here. Well, it might not seem like much, but this is actually the first time I've seen this species in this corner of far Northwest Georgia. That is the four-toed salamander, which we see all the time back home. But it definitely seems like they're a little more localized up this far. So kind of neat. Another addition to the species list for the day and the trip. I am always down to see a familiar face in a new place. And this is some really cool habitat. So hopefully we'll be able to turn up some other stuff. But so far we've seen more here than just about anywhere we've stopped today. Look at this. That is one of the biggest clusters of spotted eggs I have ever seen. There's a decent number of eggs just in this vicinity. There's a mass over there, and there's another little disjunct mass there, but that is just a gigantic conglomeration of eggs. So many of them. All right, everyone. Well, I'm thinking about calling it a day here pretty soon. It's just been a little bit tougher out here today than I was expecting slash hoping it would be. But I do feel like the trip has been pretty cool overall. We've seen some interesting stuff. Definitely a big whiff on our main target, but I, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't really expecting to find a North Georgia mud puppy on my first try, especially considering that I only know of two records ever from the state of Georgia. There could be more that I just don't know about, more recent records, but I am a little bit peeved that we weren't able to find a northern spring salamander because the spring salamander mud salamander curse has been real this winter. But yeah, it's been a great time in the mountains. The scenery up here is unbeatable in Georgia. And the winter herping is pretty solid too. I think we ended up with a couple of nice additions to the diversity for the year. But I'm going to start the long drive home and wrap this episode up here. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.